Hello, around <laughs> me and other NFL family. Somehow, some way, the Rams have defeated the Seattle Seahawks 17 to 16 in a dramatic fashion. It was ugly. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. If you're a Seahawks fan watching this, I will fully admit to that being the Seahawks blowing the game more than it was the Rams winning the game. But but the Rams made the plays at the end that they needed to, thankfully. Um, here, I'll, I'll phase up this, this, this non-copyright victory music. But I'm in a good mood. If you're a Rams fan, happy victory Sunday and Monday to you. Uh, if you're watching this, feel free to like and subscribe, all that jazz. Let's get into this here. I am just hysterical right now about this win. This was, again, one of the ugliest wins I have ever seen from a Sean McVay coach team, but we'll take it. The uh, As you see here in the box score, Seahawks uh, had most of their scoring, th well, 13 points of it in the first half, and only the field goal in the second half. Uh, now, that does also caveat that they had an opportunity to win the game with a field goal, which I was dead nervous about the whole time. But... They missed the field goal, uh, and the Rams were able to win this game. Sean McVay continues to have uh, Pete Carroll's number, and this is a sweep, a season sweep for the Rams of the Seahawks this year, which is always exciting when you can do that to a division rival. And let's get into this here. So Matthew Stafford did not have the greatest game. He had, he missed some really key throws this game, including the, the one that I was pretty ticked off about. Is he missed a wide-open Daryl Henderson, which would have been a huge play. Stafford definitely has got some film to watch. However, he made some key throws as well, especially in the second half. He did a good job of helping you know drive the Rams down the field and get the points they needed to squeak out this win. 17-31 on the day, 189 yards passing with the one TD and one interception on the awkward flea flicker from uh, you know that I it was supposed to be an end around to two two out well, but then he tossed it back awkwardly to Stafford and he got drilled. I hope Stafford's okay. Uh, definitely going to monitor his health uh, moving forward. Royce Freeman, Roland Royce Freeman on the ground today had 17 carries for 73 yards. It was exciting to see him. I, you know, I like what we see from Freeman and Hendo on the ground from the most part. Uh, Hendo had that uh, ground touchdown there. You know, he only got six carries on the day. I, I really think we need Kyron Williams back. I'm really excited for this Rams team when Kyron Williams comes back next week. Uh, so we got we got a Zach Evans carry. I know a lot of people were excited about that when because we're curious about the rookie Zach Evans. But that being said, the Rams ground game was serviceable at best today. R Royce Freeman definitely had some key runs that on on all the Rams scoring drives today. Uh, or and obviously the the Daryl Henderson touchdown run was important as well. The receiving Puka Nakua continues to be a star. Don't let his uh, you know lower receiving yards, sixty nine yards, nice. But however, those five receptions for sixty nine yards, we needed each and every one of them and that touchdown to win this game. So very very thankful that uh, Puka Nakua is on the Rams and looks to be a bright shining star for the future. Quentin Lake, leading tackler on the day, he was all over the field today. And both him and Ernest Jones, Jordan Fuller, Michael Hoyt, they came to play today. John Johnson, third, was excited to see him in there. Darian Kendrick continues to be one of the most polarizing players on the Rams. However, he did have a very clutch late game interception today that without it, I'm doubtful the Rams win this game. So, Darian Kendrick, for this game, thank you very much for your services. <laughs> If we look over to the uh, Seattle Seahawks here, they did outplay the Rams, especially in the first half. The second half, you know, Geno Smith getting injured definitely hurt the Seahawks. Props to Geno for coming in for that final drive and getting his team in scoring position to win this game. I would not put, you know, Geno as the reason the Seahawks lost this game. We'll get into that in a bit. But uh, Geno Smith clearly looked like the better quarterback between him and Drew Locke. Uh, Zach Charbonnet was a scary, you know, ground running back, uh, ground attack running back for the Seahawks on the day. And uh, he had some tough slugging yards on there. But the Rams were able to, I, I would say, 
almost completely neutralized this Seahawks rushing attack. So though Charbonnet had some runs that, that scared you, they did a pretty good job of containing them, especially in the second half. DK Metcalf did have 94 yards, five receptions on the one touchdown. He had that one big 55-yarder. Uh, Lockett, they did a good job containing him for most of the day. And so that uh, wide receiving core of the Seahawks was contained. I mean, look at the Rams defense held them to 16 points. And even if they got that field goal at the end, it would have been 19 points. So, like, you, the Rams defense played really well today. I know it can be frustrating, especially in the first half. There were some, you know, some things you'd like the defense to play, you know, to play better. But in the second half, to hold a team to three points, you got to give props where props are due. The Rams uh, defense played amazing. If we get into team stats here, the, the total yards, Rams had 267, the Seahawks 291. In the game, it definitely felt like the Seahawks had outplayed the Rams a lot more than what the stat sheet would show. Um, and, and no, don't get me wrong, they still did, except for this little stat here, the rushing yards. Uh, the Rams just having a little more serviceable ground game definitely helped them in this game, especially in that second half, as I mentioned. But the Seahawks were able to move the ball, especially in the first or mainly in the first half. The third down efficiency, the Seattle started, I believe it was like their first four, three, or, or their first four third downs they converted, but then uh, like they only converted one the rest of the game. So five and 15, the Rams only had two third down conversions the whole game. So neither team doing super effective on third down, uh, which could often be a difference maker in NFL games, but the Rams were able obviously to pull it out and squeak out the win. It, I Okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room. I'm going to zoom in here so you guys can see. Penalty yards. This game was a laundry mat, right? And I'm talking like the laundry wasn't folded neatly or anything. It was going and flying every which way. The Rams had nine penalties for 92 yards. However, the Seahawks' 12 penalties for 130 yards definitely came at worst moments for the Seahawks. And I... I, I'm a big believer that's a large reason the Seahawks lost this game. They let the Rams hang around and they cost themselves with some terrible penalties. Whether you like, you know, some of the calls or not, the refs were very involved in this game, which can be very frustrating as a fan. I, I respect that. If you're a Seahawks fan watching this, totally get that. Um, but if you're a Rams fan watching that, you know, we've, we've been in those games too, where, just seems the, the penalties just come at the worst opportune times and uh, very frustrating there. So that's in the stats there. My reaction to this game is it was an ugly win, but we will take it. If you're a Rams fan, we, you know, the Rams were desperate for a win. They needed this. And here we are. Uh, the Rams get a win. They have a chance to get back-to-back -back wins for the first time since 2022 when the Rams uh, beat first the Falcons in week two of the season, and then they beat the Cardinals the following week. So here we are. We're beating a bird team in the Seahawks, and then next week we face the Cardinals again, who another bird team. So at some point we're going to have to find out maybe it's a bird thing and the Rams are just really good against bird teams. I don't know, even though we lost to the Eagles this year. And Okay, well, hopefully we can beat the Ravens because that's the other bird team on our schedule. <laughs> anyway, that's it for me. I would love to know your thoughts, your comments, your hot takes in the comments below. I will have uh, over Rams action Mondays uh, coming tomorrow morning uh, where we'll talk about some hot takes about the Rams' current, current state, and I would love your opinion on that. But let me know your thoughts on this game. If you're a Seahawks fan, if you're a Rams fan, if you're another NFL fan who just loves talking football, would love to talk with you in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Rams, horns up, and peace out. Let's go Rams. Woo! Whew. We got a win, baby.